So this is um, take, I don't know, 40 or 50. I've tried to record this weekly so many times and it's, it's, this has been a really challenge, a really challenging week to talk about, uh, simply because the transits just require me to really, really confront a lot of the realities that are going on in this world, which also require me to, I don't even want to say require, but, um, they, um, enact my, my own opinions about a lot of this stuff and, Something that I've been trying to do on this channel is not polarize my audience too much. Um, I know I've been guilty about that in the past, uh, and I try to do that as 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 well as I can. But it's it's hard to look at this week's astrology and just say, "Oh, it's just astrology, la la la," and not actually look at what's going on in this in this fucking world right now. Um, so um, if like. And I've also, again, I've tried to record this 40 or 50 times. So I'm, I, and I, I'm not exaggerating when I say 40 or 50 times. Um, so just know I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated with myself. I'm annoyed with myself. Um, this is, I've, I'm exhausted from this. I've got to do it though. Uh, I don't have a choice. I was also supposed to record this on Friday and I didn't because I was super duper sick. Like most people were, um, I feel a lot better now. I'm still a little bit under the weather, but, uh, made me a little bit late recording this. So that didn't help either, but um, let's just go ahead and start talking about the week. Um, you're going to probably hear some of my opinions about a lot of things, and a lot of you guys are just going to have to deal with it. Uh, so let's just go ahead and start talking about it one day at a time. So we start Monday off with the moon ingressing into Taurus, and it's going to be sextiling Jupiter. During the same time, we're going to be having the sun make a sextile to Neptune, and then later on in the day, the moon's going to be making a square to Mercury and conjoining Uranus. So, uh, while the moon's, uh, going into Taurus, there is this sense of things slowing down, wanting to take stock of everything, wanting to get comfortable, wanting to get your, you know, your needs met, getting nourished. But the moon's going to sextile Jupiter where, you know, one of the ways I was really thinking about, it, it's kind of like when you, have you ever like gotten ready for bed and then like you sit in bed and you get like super excited to go to sleep. Like that's very moon and Taurus sextiling Jupiter and Pisces. That when you get comfortable and you kind of get in your zone, or it's kind of like before you do a lot of work, like let's say if you're going to do work at a coffee shop, like you get your coffee, you sit in your favorite spot, you get organized, and then it's like you get in the zone. That's very Monday, like moon and Taurus sextiling Jupiter and Pisces is like getting your creature comforts together in order for you to kind of like um, expand, do things in a bigger and better way. Uh, and the sun's also going to be sextiling Neptune. So there is this romanticized and idealized way that we're perceiving what we're doing, right? The sun's in Capricorn. Our ego is really attached to uh, the rules, um, the, the systems, the way that we implement things. And I think as it's sextiling Neptune, um, we might be romanticizing the way that we see things or the way that we're going about things. But I think that is helpful at this point. What gets challenging is towards the end of the day and the evening, the moon is going to be making a square to Mercury before it conjoins Uranus. And this is what really shakes things up. Uh, Mercury is in shadow and it's in Aquarius where I feel like the definition, I feel like Mercury in Aquarius is like the definition of mental gymnastics of like, let's go through all of these hoops and do all this stuff to keep the same idea running, even though maybe the idea doesn't work that well. But I think as the moon is in Taurus squaring Mercury in Aquarius, it's like the moon in Taurus is going to be like, mm, I'm pretty comfortable here, Mercury. I don't think I'm going to change my mind. Um, even though Mercury in Aquarius is like, change your mind, change your mind. This is the way it should actually be. Mercury in Aquarius is so like, Mercury in Aquarius allows you to see things outside the box and through a different perspective. The problem though is Mercury's in a fixed sign and fixed signs are antithetical, are antithetical to uh, Mercury, because Mercury rules the mutable signs. Mercury, our, our ideas and our thoughts, they have to change. They have to grow and adapt. But Mercury and Aquarius will do the mental gymnastics to keep the same idea working, even if it doesn't, right? Um, which we could see that very prevalently, prevalently in our reality right now. Um, and I think as the moon squares Mercury, there's this sense of like, I, you know, the moon in Taurus, you can mental gymnastics all day long, but the moon in Taurus is like, this is where I'm planting my feet. This is where I feel comfortable. And I think as the moon squares Mercury, right, there's that kind of sense of like, yeah, I don't give a fuck what you say, but then the moon's going to conjoin Uranus where there's this sense of like either innovative, like way of getting comfortable or not getting or getting uncomfortable really fast. One way I, I was analogizing it in one of the 50,000 takes I try to do for this weekly is um, when I was uh, a kid and I would sleep in for school, my dad used to like 
pour a bucket of water on me or he'd get like a spray bottle of water and <laughs> spray me in the face until I woke up, which is very moon and Taurus squaring Mercury and Aquarius. It's like, it's like, no, I'm comfortable. I don't want to get up. I'm, you know, I'm warm and cozy in my bed, but that conjunction to Uranus squaring Mercury and Aquarius is like, well, you're going to have to get up anyway. Whoo, deep breath, Cameron. Let's talk about Tuesday. So this is why I have struggled talking about this week and I'm on take 40 or 50 of this is on Tuesday, the moon's going to square Saturn and trine Venus, which isn't, you know, good and bad. But uh, on Tuesday, we have Mars square Neptune. And um, the more I sit and look at Mars square Neptune, the more it's hard. It's so, this is so challenging and I'm going to do my best right now to not get upset, um, but to also really say how I feel. Mars and Sag squaring Neptune and Pisces. I think the big question is how far, how much farther can you go without asking questions? How much farther can you go without any, uh, without anything making sense? Mars in Sagittarius is like willing to take action based off faith. Mars in Sagittarius is willing to take action based off of an ideal, based off of a vision. Mars in Sagittarius is pointing to point B. Mars in Sagittarius saying, hey, we got to get to point B. Let's go. But as that squares Neptune in Pisces, what if there is no point B? What if there is no end? What if there is, what if there is no carrot? What if that's just a carrot dangling in front of you and you just keep going and going and going? At what point do you ask, where does this go? Because Mars and Sag loves to avoid too. Mars and Sag just wants to see the bigger picture and say, hey, let's just go here. And that's great. I, you're talking to someone who in my past weekly horoscopes, I've said Mars and Sagittarius, you just have to believe, you just have to go. And I still think that there's a truth to that. But as it squares Neptune, where are you going? As it squares Neptune, what's the end? As Mars squares Neptune, are you going to keep going on this trail that you know doesn't lead you to where you want to go? And at what point do you say, this doesn't make sense? This isn't right. This isn't honest or truthful. And I think as you know, Mars and Sagittarius squaring Neptune in, in, in Pisces is realizing maybe where you've been lied, what isn't working. And, and the reason I've been getting so upset about this is, you know, um, uh, I, I'm, I, I don't have to say I'm a, I'm a 25 year old Gen Z. You don't want to know my opinions about what the lockdown has done to me mentally. Um, I didn't lose, I didn't get healthy this past year because I felt like it. I got healthy because I was either going to like, you know, overeat myself to death or just keep drinking in my apartment or, uh, and just mentally lose it. I got healthy cause I had to, cause I was going to fucking lose it. And it's, uh, it's a battle every day. Um, I don't know how some of you are living in this world and just not dealing with, you know, mental illness cause this, you know. It's just, I just look at this Mars square Neptune and I, and I, and I wonder how much farther are we going to go? You know, we have done, we've done two years of lockdowns and masks and vaccines and boosters. And here we are. Things are 10 times worse. It's, uh, how, how long until you realize that the carrot isn't point B and that the carrot's just dangling in front of you? Um, and if you don't want to, and if let's not even talk about it in a, in a sense of COVID or, or the restrictions, let's just talk about it in your own personal life. Where are you going? And you can, you know, you can romanticize. The grass is always greener on the other side. Grass is always greener on the other side. But Mars square Neptune is realizing you might have just, you know, maybe that picture, like I said, Pictures can distort images and make things look much better than they appear. And I look at Mars and Sagittarius scoring Neptune and Pisces. And when do you click that this is not what you like? Mars and Sagittarius scoring Neptune at the very minimum is going, mm, maybe I should be a little bit more specific about where I'm going. At the very minimum, Mars and Sagittarius scoring Neptune and Pisces is realizing maybe what wasn't clear 
maybe what was a little bit over fantasized, maybe where your expectations were too high. But in my opinion, because of the world that we're in right now, I think this is a stark realization of how far things have gone. Mars and Sagittarius squaring Neptune and Pisces is like, you can't just say one more step, one more step, one more step. I mean, that's good motivation for like when you're running a marathon. But at some point, it's going to get dark. Like if you're, if we're, if we're all hiking and you just want to get to this next spot, it's like at some point it's going to get dark and we got to build a fire and we got to figure something, we got to do food. Mars and Sag is going Neptune and Pisces. Like you can't lead people onto a, onto a path of nothingness, which is what most people, most people in the government have done. They've led us nowhere, both the left and the right. It doesn't matter what side you're on. If you think that they're playing for you, you're wrong. You're stupid. No one's, none of these politicians are on, like, especially the people that are very pro Donald Trump. It cracks me up that they're very like, wait, he's, he's pro vaccine. It's like, it was the same thing that I, I, it blows my mind that people still think Joe Biden's like this great guy. Um, they're not your friend. They're not actually trying to help you. And I just look at Mars and Sag squaring, squaring Neptune is, what, you know, if you want to keep if Mars and Sag going Neptune and Pisces, like, I guess you don't have to question where you're going, but just know you might starve if you don't maybe take a look around. Have you ever, uh, well, it's one of those things where if you walk in a straight line for thousands of miles, you will end up right back where you're, where you started. I think that's because like one leg is taller than or longer than the other. So it pretty much makes you walk in a big circle. That's Mars and Sag scoring Neptune and Pisces. If you're not clear on where that point B is, you're just going to wind up in a big circle, which is really funny because it's kind of what like reality is like right now because it feels like we just walked into a big circle and we just sacrificed uh, so much. Um, people have sacrificed their jobs. People have sacrificed their kids' education. People have sacrificed their mental – people like me who have sacrificed my mental health. Two years of social – do you know um, – on just a tidbit, on, if I could just share my own COVID experience with you guys. When I was living in LA and I got out of LA, I I felt like a dog. I felt like a pit bull who had been locked up on uh, in like a uh, in like a junkyard and had just met another dog for the first time. I I I didn't know how to socialize. I felt I felt overly aggressive, and it was like it was like I didn't know how to socialize. Right, and I still struggle with that now because I'm partly like I don't want to say I'm deaf because I don't want to be like. I, I just don't use terms to my advantage like that, but I have very, I have struggled hearing a lot. And when everyone's wearing masks and then there's also like the glass shield in front of you, I don't know what anyone's saying. Now, two years into not really hearing what anyone's saying and then also not seeing a smile in public, it kind of gets to your brain just a little bit, just a little bit. It just starts to affect you just a little bit. Um... And, you know, this isn't just a Mars square Neptune. The reason I'm kind of hounding on this is this kicks off the Mercury retrograde. So my question is on Tuesday, where the fuck are you going? And like, I think with it squaring Neptune, I think you're going to realize you don't know where you're going either. And that's okay. You're talking to someone, I've said Mars and Sag, you're like, you've got to just believe in where you got to go. This is going to be a test of faith. I don't want to deny that. But I think this is a big look at like, how much farther can you go without clarity? How much farther can you go without, and how much farther are you going to be led into the desert? I think that's, there is, I think that's like a, a biblical story where, you know, they get led in the desert and get led astray. That's this. How much farther are you going to go until you start asking questions? And the other thing is too, when we talk about this Aquarius stuff, for the love of God, can you, s <laughs> I've tried to tell people you know, they don't need to like implement a vaccine mandate uh, through the cops, right? When they can just spin corporate media and get you to hate your neighbor and to make you think that it's your neighbor's fault we're in the we're in this pandemic. Like, yeah, it's a we could blame individuals for a, a pandemic, right? Because that's super fucking like what good human beings do. But the thing is, it's Saturn and Aquarius is why would they need the police to check vaccine mandates when they can just get society to police themselves, when they can just get everyone else to snitch on each other? 
You know, it's funny. The ACAB people, the people that are the biggest people against cops are the first people to snitch on everything too. Super funny. And I bring that up because like Mercury's about to retrograde right here. Square Uranus. It's about to get pretty wild and crazy. Um, but I look at this Mars square Neptune and I just, and I just ask, how much farther are we going to go until we have some clarity about what point B is? What is point B? We're not even, we all know that the, that the pandemic's not going away. We all know that the vaccines don't stop the spread either. So what are we doing? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And if you think that lockdowns are going to stop the, stop the spread, you are misinformed. You're peddling misinformation and you're just dumb, honestly. Like, wake the fuck up. Um, again, I'm not saying I have the right answers or that anyone else has got this perfect, but just know that all it is, it does not take a lot to accept that we're going nowhere fast and no one knows where we're going or why we're going in the direction and there is no point B. You know, you could be on the left or the right, doesn't matter. It's time to realize that, uh, you know, um, there's where are we where are we going with all of this stuff? And ask that in your personal life too. Check in. Where are you going? Why? And the reason I bring this up too is on Tuesday the moon's going to square Saturn, so there is this kind of op, uh, this challenge to authority. But then the moon's going to try and Venus, right? We are under this value reconstruction. Let's talk about Wednesday. Let's go into Wednesday real quick before I keep you know ranting off. Um, as we go into Wednesday. Moon's going to go void before it goes into Gemini, and it's going to conjoin uh, the North Node and square Jupiter as Mercury is squaring Uranus the whole day. Um, on Wednesdays, the Moon's going to be void. That's one thing until later on it goes into Gemini, conjoins the North Node and squares Jupiter. Uh, things get very loud in the evening. Moon and Gemini is very blah, 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 and on the North Node, it just turns it up more, but the Moon will be squaring Jupiter and Pisces. There is information that we're receiving and communicating that is going against this Jupiter and Pisces thing, right? Jupiter and Pisces is like 2022, new year, new me. We're going to see this, you know, things will be optimistic and better. But that moon in Gemini conjoining the North Node squaring Jupiter is like, uh, is it? Is this good? Is this better? Is this what's going to happen? You know, uh, and Mercury squaring Uranus. Look, it's not exact. It's not by the minute. But like it's starting on Wednesday, um, you know, again, and I also bring up this whole Mars Neptune thing too, for those that are struggling with mental, like with your mental health and because the government doesn't give a fuck about your mental health because they'd rather lock you down and shut you the fuck up before they actually give a shit about mental health. Uh, just know it's hard. This is going to be a hard week and I'm struggling here with you guys. Um, it's not easy for us that struggle with this shit, especially even if for those that are, if, if you are, even if you're still scared of, you know, getting COVID and you don't want to get sick, I don't, I don't blame you. Um, you know, you can't live in anxiety and fear forever. We have to move on at some point, but this isn't going to be easy because I just think there's a lot of uncertainty. And I also think that they're going to be, you know, because social, well, this is the other thing, you know, social media literally exploits mental illness. Um, and you know, also, by the way, if you're pro like mental health, and you want to actually do something with your mental health, get off social media. And also you can't be pro mental health and then pro social media at the same time. It doesn't work. I'm very anti-social media. They literally designed that shit to exploit your mental illness. Um, so get off, especially Twitter for the love of God. Um, we get into Wednesday and again, Mercury squaring Uranus. Mercury is <sighs> unfortunately Mercury and Aquarius is very mental gymnastics and Mercury and Aquarius is, trying to again aquarius is a fixed sign it is about the stability it saturn's there right saturn and aquarius doesn't want to give up you governments that when you give a government power they ain't going to be they ain't going to get rid of it that easily right uh but you know mercury in aquarius here squaring uranus is you might run out of mental gymnastics to make everything make sense Mercury, a communication ideas, technology. God, I'm not looking forward to this one for tech. I already had a big Mercury in shadow scare last week that is making me so paranoid about this one. Like I almost deleted like so much data and I was, and it didn't happen, which almost makes me, it almost makes me nor, more nervous that I didn't delete the data because I'm like, shit, now what's going to actually happen? But anyway, as Mercury squares Uranus, and I said the mental health thing too is like, 
for people like me that are all types of, I don't want to say crazy, but I'm all over the place. Like Mercury, of our, men, our mentality in Uranus is a little bit unstable. I don't think that's going to really help the whole, you know, mental stability thing. But I think Mercury squaring Uranus is, you might, you know, it's, um, something's going to happen that's going to stir up the pot. It's going to destabilize things. This is very unstable. I cannot, like, I would be, if nothing happens, this Mercury retrograde, that isn't absolutely like a big deal in the news. I have no idea what, then astrology will truly baffle me versus I would assume this is probably going to be pretty fucking crazy. Like really, like, again, like I said before, I think the day before this, like maybe this day, like someone's going to be like, everything's fine and everything's under control. And of course it's not, uh, but everything comes crashing down. Uh, we get into um, Thursday and on Thursday, oh, whoops, the thing's not up here. Uh, Thursday, the moon is going to make a trine to Mercury and Saturn while Mercury is still squaring Uranus. <sighs> uh the communication is here at least, right? But that's not always, like what is said on Thursday is going to be the stuff that gets uprooted, right? Mercury is coming up to Uranus and this moon in Gemini, all of this chatting, moon's gonna try and Mercury, it's gonna try and Saturn. There's like, oh, this is making sense. This is making sense. This is making sense. And then Mercury stations retrograde like the next day. Um, well, let's, let me actually get into that because when we actually look at Friday, Friday is... Mercury stations retrograde. Moon's going to square Neptune and go opposite Mars. Let's actually talk about it. So that moon, again, will try and Saturn, try and Mercury, where there's those connections that are made, this, that communication that's had. But then Mercury actually stations retrograde, where this is just going back over everything that we just did. So what's been going on since the end of 2021? Where's Mercury at in your chart? What have you been thinking? What have you been talking about? We're about to go over all that again. And it's with a surprise. It's with a twist. And it's not stable. It's not what you think. Um, and on this day too, on Friday, the moon's going to be in Gemini opposite Mars and Sag. So this is definitely fights and conflicts and the moon's going to square Neptune. Seems like a lot of chaos on Friday. Seems like a lot of confusion on Friday. Doesn't sound very fun in my opinion. Um, again, and also too, if you're the class of people out there that's looking for, I think like stability or things to just, to just be normal, it's not going to happen. Um, we're far from that. And I just think this is a, you know, um, it's inevitable. It's Mercury and Aquarius scoring Uranus. Again, Mercury, uh, Aquarius is like groups of people, societies, Saturn's here where there's like this authoritarian, you know, shit coming in and, you know, the the classes are divided. There's this intellectual divide. The, the Saturn Aquarius is like the people are the authority and they're divided amongst themselves. And Mercury is there too, right? Mercury squaring Uranus is like, there's going to be, I think, a really, I, I, it's, it's it, again, now, if this wasn't like the pandemic, I would, I would be a little bit more open to interpretations, but like, I think this is going to just be so literal that I think this is, but the other part is like, things only get crazier. So I just don't know what this could even be. I mean, yes, yeah, sure. It's probably going to be some infrastructure thing. It's number one going to be an infrastructure problem, whether that's, a, oh, that's the other thing. Electrical grid. Oh, I forgot to almost say that. Electrical grid failure everywhere. Uh, environmental disaster, electrical problems, for sure, for sure. But I mean, like, they've been, like, there's literally, there's going to be an energy crisis too. This would, this probably would be the energy crisis that's going to happen. Um, but they've been predicting that, that there's going to be an energy crisis this winter. Um, it's just going to be a shit show. It's just going to be a shit show, um, no matter what you kind of look at it as. And I just think as Mercury is here, as it's been in Aquarius, and we've been thinking in these terms of like, all right, Putting the perspective on of, uh, again, Aquarius is like, it's an air sign, right? So it's intellectual and it's an ideas, but it's about Saturn. It's it's like the the spirit of the law. Well, it's like, what does it mean, right? And that's, again, that's why I say Mercury and Aquarius is like the definition of like mental gymnastics. Jump around everywhere to kind of make this one idea consistent, even though it's not consistent. So Friday's crazy. Um Mercury's going to square Uranus. Things will become what they say unhinged. And I think that doesn't help that the moon is going to be squaring Neptune and going opposite Mars and Sag. Because again, I think the question is, where are we going? Where are we going? And honestly, too, without even the COVID stuff, just in your personal life, because I even feel this way right now. I'm like, where am I going? 
Like, what, what, where are we going? What's next? What are we doing here, right? Um, Venus is still retrograde, so it's not like we're really, you know, forward momentum pushing forward with a lot of new stuff. We're under this reconstruction stage, and Mercury is also in shadow now retrograde. There's a lot of moving backwards at this point. There's a lot of going back over the stuff that we've been doing. But I think because we're going to be going backwards, there's this sense of like, what's going on? Where are we going? What's next? Mar like that moon in Gemini opposite Mars and Sag is like, Mars and Sag, where are we going? Where are you taking me? What is point B? Are we just going to keep going and going forever? Or is there something else that we've got to do? Um... I think as Mercury stations retrograde too, re rethinking uh, the way that we interact with communities, rethinking the way that we interact with society. You know, that's on some meta shit. But, um, you know, I don't think that is a, I think that's just something very underlying that we'll get uh, more into once Mercury goes back over Pluto and everything. But I just look at this as, uh, ex just expect Friday to be quite um, turbulent. I think to say the, to say the least, uh, we get into Saturday and the moon's going to be void. Uh, did I put moon sextile void? What? Okay. What did I mean with that? Um, okay. I don't know what I meant with moon sextile void. I think I just did something wrong there. Moon is going to be sextile void and then it's going to go into cancer and then it's going to try and Jupiter and Saturn leave shadow. So we get into Saturday, moon will go into cancer, try and Jupiter. Love that. Um, I think on Saturday, there is the sense of like moons in cancer, focusing on our feelings, focusing on our needs, focusing on our emotions. It's shining Jupiter. That's allowing us this ability to be, you know, hopeful and honest and faithful, um, being able to actually like communicate our emotions, um, maybe a little bit more properly. But I think the biggest deal is Saturn leaves shadow at this point where it's like we're in new territory, right? Since May of 2020. One, Saturn has been in this area and we're finally out of that now. So we're finally in new territory when it comes to the Saturn Aquarius stuff. So you could look at whatever Aquarius rules in your chart and you could say that you're going to be taking on new responsibilities. You're going to be taking on new, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Responsibilities. Uh, can't think of the other word right now. Um, but we'll be doing all that. And, uh, I mean, it's also Saturn and Aquarius too. The the whole social distancing, isolation stuff, that's going to come back up again in some way. Don't know how exactly. Um, but Saturday, it just seems like that moon shining Jupiter is really like kind of focusing on like, what do you need? It's shining Jupiter and Pisces. Like, what do you emotionally need in order to see positivity, in order to see the bigger picture, in order to have hope, in order to have faith? You know, what do you have to connect to? What do you have to feel? Um, that leads us to uh, Sunday. Sun's going to conjoin Pluto. Moon's going to go opposite Venus retrograde uh, as we get into this full moon in Cancer. Um, sun on top of Pluto. Ooh, this will be interesting. Um, you know, Pluto's that fear, the corruption, the um, the power. And I think there's a lot of that coming back into play here. I think it's just the sun on top of Pluto is our ego being really attached to our power, our ego being attached to our fears too. This moon is in the, the, the moon in Cancer. We're building up to this full moon in Capricorn, which is also like on the same degree that Venus stationed retrograde at. But, uh, you know, sun conjoined Pluto, moon's going to go opposite Venus retrograde. It's like, hey, moon in Cancer, opposite Venus, you're not going to get what you need by playing by the rules. You're not. Well, it's like, you know, a lot of people, it's, it, it blows my mind that people think that the unvaccinated should not get health care. Like, okay, where was that attitude with fat people? What? <laughs> that also, if you believe that like unvaccinated people should like, you know, be segregated or like shouldn't get health care, you do know that, it's, you know how close to Nazism that is? pretty much parallel. And I think if you're, again, I, I, I truly don't care what like your political views are, but if you're very like, yes, we should outcast certain members, certain minorities of society based off, um, like health stuff, like you're, you're pretty much a Nazi and, uh, I don't want you on here because I don't, I, 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 I pray, I pray to the Lord that 
you can see a different perspective of this. Because I know most most people, well, that's what's really frustrating about a lot of like, especially the people on the right. The people on the right are like, oh my God, like the left people are horrible and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, yes, there's a lot of truth to it. But like, you can't, a lot of these people are good people just with bad ideas. That's what most of society is like. And they just need to be like, you know, more educated um, and a little bit more aware. I don't think anyone's necessarily inherently, you know, maybe there are a few people that are inherently bad, but, you know, anyway, I can talk about that shit forever and I'm just so over it. I just look at this moon and cancer opposite Venus retrograde. You're not going to get what you, you're not going to get what you want by playing by the rules. Um, you're not going to get, well, because, well, this is the other thing too. It's, 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 it's a, it's a carrot in front of you. Um, I, well, I look at this moon, we're building up for the full moon on Monday. Right. Let's look at this full moon. And this full moon is that sun on top of Pluto. It's like, are you getting your needs met? We talked about that that one time, I think when Venus, right before Venus stationed retrograde on Pluto with the moon and cancer opposite it. It was like, hey, you got to ask, are you getting your needs met? And this is checking back in. You getting those needs met? Did you change the way that you interacted with things in order to get those needs met? Because I think this is a, a, on Sunday, we're checking back in. Are you getting your needs met? Venus is retrograding Capricorn. You know, the way the rule book is, uh, I think, up for um, not debate, but, you know, up for change. And I just, I just think this is, you know, like, if I could just be honest with you guys, I know, and I know I'm going to read, I'm going to read so many shitty comments about how I'm this and I'm that. And I guess I don't really, you know, have a choice. I have to upload this weekly. I just hope, you know, I just, I, I think we should all look at this as like, we, we all went through the pandemic. And even, even though half of you are so gun ho on blaming the other side for everything, you guys are all fucking idiots that do that. Um, it's not anyone's fault that there was a pandemic. It's not the unvaccinated's fault. Also, I keep, and I just have to rant on this for a second because I see, I kept seeing this tweet posted everywhere that some doctor on Twitter was like, oh, because no one got vaccinated, not everyone got vaccinated all in time. That's the reason there's mutations. That's literally false information and she should be censored for that shit. If, if, if everyone else is going to get censored, I don't really even believe in the censorship stuff, but, um, Delta uh, was, was a mutation that happened before the vaccines ever got introduced. And if it truly was the unvaccinated that was causing the mutations, it's a little racist to say that simply because, um, you know, here in the West, Pfizer is hoarding vaccines and they think you should get a third one before poor people in poor countries should even get their first or second dose. So we know that, you know, Delta, you know, came from, or was it Delta? I don't know what the fucking one was. I think it was Delta that came from India. Uh, same thing with Omicron came from Africa, even though it came from vaccinated people. Stop fucking blaming other people. Guys, we're in a pandemic. Like, grow the fuck up. Like, this is not any individual's fault. Stop trying to blame your neighbor for all these problems. It's, it's, <laughs> it really is a failure of government. And it's a failure of corporations and it's a failure of science, in my opinion. Um, these lockdowns have done nothing to help us. They have literally done nothing. And if you think that they have helped your, if you think they are helped, then tell me what they helped doing. Did they help with uh, groceries being more affordable? Did they help with the obesity epidemic that's happening, which no one gives a shit about? Did they help with uh, child poverty? Do you know how many missing children there are from the, from the school districts now? Do you know how many kids aren't actually getting their other vaccines that they need because of all of this stuff that's happened? Do you know how many people have overdosed? I'm more at risk of a fentanyl overdose than I am of COVID. No one gives a fuck about that. You know how many people, you know how many people I, I know have killed themselves, overdosed, lost their jobs? If you think the lockdowns have helped, it's um, I think you need help. They haven't helped. Um, they have made things dramatically worse because we're two years into this and things have only gotten worse. Um, and this is what's been so hard about making this video because I don't, I try not to be this polarizing. I really don't. And I don't want to be, I don't want to, cause I don't want to argue with you guys about this stuff. I want to enjoy my life. Um, and I honestly, and I'm not going to make you guys change your minds because this, and this is what's so frustrating about this pandemic stuff is even trying to communicate because no, everyone's so righteous in, vil in, in trying to defend their side that they're not open to hearing the other arguments. So I'm not here to try to change your mind because I ain't going to do it. Change it your fucking self. But like, it's just, uh, 
I don't know. It's just it's just very frustrating. And I think and again, I it's this is a very hard week to talk about. I think a lot of this week is about kind of waking up and smelling the coffee and kind of going, oh, this isn't working. And if you don't smell that, there you there might be problems ahead. I would rather Mars squaring Neptune is going, oh God, what's a good I God, there was just a good example of this I thought of. Well, Mars square Neptune is before. Um, I don't know shit about welding. I, I, my, my stepdad's a welder and I've done a little TIG welding before. I don't know enough to really know what I'm talking about here, but I do know enough to know that when it comes to like welding or any type of huge thing like that, you want to double check all, like, for example, you don't want to have your welding machine in the fire, or let's say even you don't want to have, um, uh, a big old canister of oxygen next to a big open flame, right? You might go, hmm, maybe that's a bad thing. And I look at the Mars in Sag squaring Neptune in Pisces, and you have to kind of put two and two together and go, I don't think that looks like a recipe to disaster. Maybe we should change that. Well, well it's, it's the same thing. It was the same thing with the... um. Well, I, don't, I won't even talk about that. I was going to talk about the the Millennium Tower because they're they're just like, oh, we're just going to fix it. And it's like one of those things where, well, uh, you know, it can get bad really quickly. But I just look at the Mars Square Neptune. You kind of have to ask yourself, hey, is this dangerous? Is this safe? Is are you seeing everything clearly here? Like, if you see a like, if you see it, speak up, right? Like Mars in Sag squaring Neptune in Pisces, you might get gaslit into thinking that you're not seeing what you're seeing. They're like, nope. This is not what you're seeing. It's something else. Ignore it. But then a couple of days later, Mercury stations retrograde where you go, oh, I saw that and I didn't know what to think of it. Um, you know, next week, um, full moon in Cancer, Mars at Galactic Center, Sun goes into Aquarius, Mercury, Kazemi. Woo. Uh, you want to know what my final thoughts are for this week? My final thoughts are is I am tired. And, um, I am slowly losing my mind, but I will do, I'm going to just keep doing what I can. I think that you guys too. And I think if you're like me and losing your mind that you're not alone, uh, and that you should keep going because there is going to be a light at the end of the tunnel, swear to God, there will be a good day one day. But I, I, I also think just a lot of this week is just, just, just wake up guys. Like we're, we're what, how much, <laughs> what? But if you're if we're gonna do another lockdown again, if we're gonna go and do another this and then, and it's just at at what point do we say, you know, and this isn't even like a we need to stop the tyranny and we need to it's not even that. It's just can we just stop pretending? Can we stop pretending? Can we just and and you know, ask this for your personal life too. Um where is Sagittarius and Pisces in your chart? And where are you taking action on the Sag stuff? And where is the Pisces stuff going to get in your way of confusion? I'm working on that right now because Mars is in my first house and Neptune's in my fourth house of Pisces. And of course, I got to move out of this apartment and I don't know where I'm really going to live next. And I'm kind of over here and I'm kind of over there and I don't know what to do. And I don't know it's again, but anyway, that's just my own life personal story. But, um, you know, Anyway, I'm sure I'm going to get a bunch of hate comments and a bunch of negativity. And because I brought up COVID and other stuff, I'm sure I'm going to get demonetized or censored from this. So I guess that's that. I'm just, I'm, I'm a little cynical right now. I'm a little frustrated. It's, and it's really hard to, to, to not, to not talk about this stuff, right? Like, um, it's, 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 I, and I just look at this week as, with Mercury stationing retrograde, you know, we're, we're going to go back over all this stuff that we've done these first two weeks, right? Like, again, this is why I kind of said it's a good time to maybe even try something new because we're going to have to do it again. This is a good rough draft area. But I think if this is the rough draft, for example, if this is the rough draft week while Mercury's in shadow, that Mars squaring Neptune is maybe realizing like, oh God, what's a good way to do that one? Like, Mars squaring Neptune is like, oh, I just wrote a whole five-page essay on this on the wrong topic. And you go, I should have read the, I should have read the fine print. Read the fine print. Mars square Neptune is don't just assume shit and just and just don't just go with the flow because everyone else is. Uh read the fine print. And I think as uh, again, 
Mercury's in shadow. We're going to come back over all this stuff again. Whatever you tried to implement these past two weeks, we're going to get a second chance at. I think that's a good thing for this week. Um, I just look at this week as it's 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 almost impossible to look at this week without looking at the 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 current transits and stuff. And I just clarify your vision, figure out where you're actually going. Um, read the fine print, and you know, for example, you might have took the wrong turn at Albuquerque, as Bugs Bunny used to say. And uh, if you made the wrong turn, Mars, like Mars and Sag scoring Neptune is like taking the wrong direction. That's okay. You're going to have to, you, you have to forgive yourself. There's no reason to beat yourself up at all. We are humans. We make mistakes. You're going to, but you, you know, if you made the, if you, if you made the wrong mistake, you're just going to have to turn around and do it again. It's just, it's just how, it's just how it goes. And you'll learn from this, right? And I just think, um, a lot of a lot of this is just it's just about learning. A lot of this is just you know, there's a part of astrology that's so literal of like the political stuff, and then there's a part of astrology again that's personal development. And I think the personal development part is just about learning from your mistakes. But oftentimes you have to you have to suffer the consequences of your mistakes in order to learn from it. Right? You learn to not touch a hot stove, a hot pan on the stove by touching it. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So anyway. I guess my final thoughts for this week are just um, you'll, you're going to see where 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 things aren't adding up and you're going to go, oh, we got to change things and you're going to have to change them. And it's probably not going to be a fun experience. But that's why we have astrology because we're expecting it to be hard and difficult already. We're not expecting it to be rosy. So it should be pretty easy now that you know this stuff. So anyway, I'm just going to stop rambling, um, I guess. And I would say let me know what your thoughts and opinions are in the comments, but I'm sure I'm going to get a bunch of hate or whatever. But anyway, I just really hope that you guys, um, honestly, like fuck the astrology of this week. I, it's just with, with all of the COVID stuff. I mean, and I'm one of those people too, that like, you know, I don't think like, don't get me wrong. I'm at this point now where I'm like, it's time to get over COVID, but also like, I don't like, like if you don't want to get sick, that's fine. Like, and I don't think anyone needs to get sick. And if like, you're afraid of getting sick, you're afraid of COVID. I think that's fine. And there's this sense of like, like, it's just, I don't know. I don't know. This is why it's, I, I'm, this is my final take. I'm getting through this. I guess this is a lot of me just, I guess, being open and honest and vulnerable. I guess uh, maybe next week I could be a little bit better. I maybe be, might be a little bit more on top of my game, but um, you know, I guess I'll leave you with that. Uh, that. Well, that was the one thing I wanted to end on. I just hope you guys really prioritize your mental health no matter what. And that includes not worrying about, you know, getting sick. Um, when you talk to someone who has um, terminal illness, uh, you can't really um, worry about it. You know, I, I, I see people all the time like, Cameron, you don't understand what it's like to, you know, you, you don't want people to get sick and they have this. It's like, dude, like, bro, <laughs> you can, you can, you can, you can be a hypochondriac, wash your hands, do all your vaccines and you can still, you still get cancer tomorrow. And uh, you can get cancer and then you'll get treatment. You're going to get blasted with radiation. You're going to lose 100 pounds. You're going to look 40 years older. People won't recognize you and they won't want to look you in the eye because you look so different. And you're still going to have to live your life. It's unfortunately health and health and disease and, and all that stuff is uh, inevitable. And uh, I really think that mental health plays such a big role part in uh a, a lot of this health a lot of this health stuff so if you're if you are actually afraid of getting sick from covid i think your biggest job is to not be mentally afraid because that that fear in your head will do will do worse than um even the even the sickness right um doctors this is this is found this is this is uh, this is literally science of how your brain can literally just control how you fight infection how you deal with disease based off uh, how confident you are on, on handling that, not to say that that does everything. You can't just think your way out of cancer. Um, although I have seen it, um, it's just, it's, I, I would just hope that you guys really prioritize your mental health because I think out of the Mars square Neptune and the Mercury square Uranus, I think this is going to be a really hard mental health week. Um, and that's why I've been really stressed and I've been struggling with this video because it's going to put that challenge there. So um, no love and light this week, unfortunately. So I don't know what to tell you guys, but anyway, 
I really do love every single one of you that watch this. I don't care what your political affiliations are. I don't care what you believe in. I love you anyway because I truly believe that this we like the only way to heal from all this stuff is by we got to heal each other. We got to we got to come to work together. And even if you don't agree with my, you know, COVID opinions or political opinions, uh, maybe even astrology opinions. And if that in that case, thank you for still watching. Um, but it's it's just we we really have got to find some peace. My Libra moon can't do this whole everyone mad at each other for forever. But anyway, I, I will actually shut up now. So I'll leave you guys with that. I'll see you next week.